Ah, press the button first. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak. Uh, I'm part of the Scottish Sovereignty Research Group. We are a think tank that's been meeting for the last two and a half years, and we concentrate effectively on Scotland's sovereignty, devolution, <laughs> and obviously uh, routes to independence. We have four uh, expert uh, professors on our panel that join us each week. Anyway, I thought, looking, uh, it was brought to our attention a couple of your motions, 8.6 and 8.12, which appear to link directly to our area of expertise, which is sovereignty and how Scotland may or may not be independent and devolution. So I thought a little very quick history lesson might be helpful. The nation of Scotland has a long history and it can be traced back to 892 AD. The, sover the sovereignty of the Scottish people was first established in the Declaration of Arbroath in 1320 AD and again in the Claim of Right 1689, which many of you will have heard of recently. The Claim of Right 1689 to self-determination has been reaffirmed many times, including on the 4th of July 2018 in the House of Commons, where it officially endorses the principles of the Claim of Right. More recently, uh, not far from here, uh, King Charles III had to swear to uphold the very same Claim of Right. And so that is proving that this is a valid and uh, it still remains in force. It was, uh, it was brought to my attention these particular uh, motions uh, that have an impact on the Scotland Act 1998, which of course, as you will all be aware, is part of the devolution settlement between Westminster and Edinburgh. So apart from the question on whether the council should be involved in political campaigns, and of that I'm not uh, particularly sure, that will be up to yourselves, whether it's part of your standing orders. But it appears that a local council has no standing under the Scotland Act 1998 to become involved in a political settlement between the kingdoms of Scotland and England. The council would have had uh, a part to play if the three estates had still been in place. And the three estates, unfortunately, are now defunct. Um, the three estates were represented in the Parliament of Scotland and included the clergy, lords and borough representatives. And that would have included uh, representatives from this institution if it was still a borough. But as we know, that is no longer a borough and the three estates are not currently sitting. So there would be, appear to be no democratic process to engage. Um, this was all before the Treaty of Union, 1706, and that's before the Acts of Union, 1707, both the English and Scottish Acts. However, without the reconvening of the three estates, it would not be competent for a local council to attempt to engage in the formal rep representations to either the Scottish Government or the UK Government on a matter that involves the Scotland Act, 1998, as that is a matter of law. This brings me on to the substance of this matter, which is Section 35 of the Scotland Act 1998, which I believe is the, the subject of one of the motions. Uh, Section 30, 35 of the Scotland Act allows the UK Government to block any legislation that in the UK Government's reasonable view would interfere with or have a material impact on any other part of UK legislation. It is clear that the Scottish Parliament, which voted for the GRR Bill on December the 22nd, uh, would amend the Gender Recognition Act 2004, which is a Westminster piece of legislation. So the UK Government has the legal right to block Scotland's Scottish GRR Bill, as it would affect UK legislation. Expert legal opinion, including Lord Hope of Craighead, has said, and I quote, there are two points. The first the first is, does the bill make modifications to the 2004 Gender Recognition Act that exists in law as it is? And the answer to that question is, most certainly does, because that is part of the purpose. Indeed, the whole purpose of the bill itself is to change um, the 2004 Act. Then the question is, was the Secretary of State acting reasonably deciding to make that order? 
When you look at the reasons in the document that have now been published, it is very difficult to see how a court would come to a conclusion to the contrary effect. In other words, um, he believes, um, and he is a retired Supreme Court judge, he believes there is no chance that Nicola Sturgeon's government can uh, overturn the UK government's uh, decision. Therefore, I would ask the councillors, why would you vote for a council to firstly become involved in a party political campaign? And secondly, the council has no part to play under the Treaty of Union, which is between the Kingdom of Scotland and England. This is solely a, que solely a question between the SNP-led Scottish Government and the UK Government. I think it's also noteworthy, um, following recent press developments and stories and scandals, that we should take into account what public opinion on this subject actually is. And that is all I really wanted to say, and thank you very much for your, the opportunity. Thanks. Thanks very much for your words. Are, are there any questions? I don't... Oh, uh, sorry. Um, yes, go ahead. Yes, <laughs> thank you, convener, and thank you for the, for the clarification in your presentation. Um, could you just clarify, um, perhaps again, this point about the, um, the impact on the Equalities Act 2010? Um, could you just say a bit about that? Thank you. The Equality Act 2010 also comes into play um, because, again, it's a UK piece of legislation. If, by bringing in to, if, if the, uh, G the GRR bill had in fact become law, then anything that would impact on sex-based rights, which is in particular uh, women's rights to single-sex spaces, which were um, supported under the Equality Act, they are therefore in conflict with the GRR bill because there is no uh, it has to be said, I was, I was there during the discussions and the vote, and some of the amendments the day before would have put some reassurance in place and may well have helped the bill pass. But most of those amendments were rejected. So the result is, the way it currently stands, it is not compatible. It would change the 2004 Act. The 2004 Act, if you read it, was very, set a very high bar for anyone to obtain uh, a GRC, a Gender Recognition Certificate. It meant you had to have medical supervision, you had to wait two years, you might have already have to have proof that you've had surgery. This um, is not the case under the GRR bill. The GRR bill brings something brand new, which is self-identification. That is not referred to in the 2004 Act. And as a result, that is a major change, which is why I believe the UK government is probably correct to, in its action. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Leslie Manning Cameron, and my apologies to, to Councillor Jones, whose surname I had forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Provost. Um, just listening to your deputation, the message I'm taking is that we really have no purview in, the, in, in this as a council. So my question is, what impact do you think that the decisions that are made by the UK government at Westminster and the SNP Green-led government at, SM, uh, at Holyrood have on the constituents we serve and the services we provide to them? Because the impact of the legislation made in both of those places has a direct impact, and I would put it to you that we do. It's important and it's relevant for us to take an interest. I, I, I see your point. Um, they certainly do have an impact when it comes to funding, because funding obviously comes from Westminster in a block grant to the UK, to the Scottish Parliament, and then the Scottish Parliament then uh, funds the part of the local councils. However, the, the legal route going back is they're not a named party in the action. So there is no, if you like, uh, return route from councils to get involved in Westminster legislation. For you to do that, it would, it would be restricted to polit elected politicians, which there's 50, 59 Scottish politicians. So the route should be to, for political parties to use their own representatives, which I don't know which party you're from, but, but you may well have an MP or more than one. So it's, it's a matter for them. But it's not a matter for the council itself, which is a public body, and I understand not allowed to be involved in political campaigns. And I would say this is a political campaign because it's not law.